Hi everyone. I have a word which is us praising God. Us as his nation, as Israel. We are praising God and we're showing you our passage to praise and worship our Father and thank Him for bringing us through everything He's brought us through and everything He's about to accomplish for us in our lives now. Right. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, God be wanting to get along, wouldn't it? God, calm down. <laughs> he be trying to do the intro. Oh, go ahead. Right. Let us do us, Father God. This is Psalms 107. It's going to be the entire thing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We gather them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Thank you, God, for bringing us out of Egypt and always keeping us safe, right? Fed, clothed, and sheltered, right? They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. God heard all of our distresses as Israel. Israel, he let us rack them up. He said, rack them up. Right. <clears throat> Mess them up. Mess them up. Right. Whew. Yeah, he about to play pool with you. Right. He, he let them rack it up like the pool. Right. What is that? A triangle. Right. What's inside? balls right so god let all these people put their balls <laughs> in his triangle so he could bust them up right god is the best ball cracker ever he is kicking all y'all in y'all balls right uh verse six then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he delivered them out their distresses and he led them forth by the right way and they might that they might go to a city of habitation oh that men will praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men for he saith the longing, the longing soul, excuse me, for he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I just told you he fed us and kept us and gave us his word to sustain us and help us to get through all of our bad times and to keep our measure of faith right where it should be at the time. Let me explain something right quick. Your faith is not always 1,000. It, 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 your faith goes to where it needs to be. I don't need a thousand percent faith to, for this pen. You understand me? But I need a thousand percent faith to, to be empress, right? I have the Solomon blessing over my life, my family. So, verse 8. Oh, that man will praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longest soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. Such as, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow and death being bound in affliction and iron. Because they rebelled, rebelled against the words of God. And cut. Dang. What is going on? Because they rebelled against the words of God. And contend with the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distress. So once you go through something and fall and bust your forehead. God pick his little baby up. Go wash the boo-boo off. Put a band-aid on it. Right. Right. Verse 14. He brought them out of the darkness and the shadow of death. And break their bands in sunder. So you were broken. You were bruised. You were battered. Beat down. And God cleaned you up. And remade you into his child. He signed and sealed you. Right. He removed the stink of death, the stench of death from you. Right. And made you his. Right. He sealed you with his Holy Spirit before he sent Jesus. Right. So he brought them out of the darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. 15. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So he took out a lot of that pain from the Hebrews. He took a lot of that pain from us as Israel, what we've been through. A lot of us don't remember these last two years too well, right? Because God just kept us, you know, cool, calm, collective, and cleansed. He purified and cleansed us through each process. He didn't allow us to carry something from the spring into the summer, from the summer into the fall. God been cleansing Israel the entire process for these past two years that we have been under attack, right? I'm not the only one that's been under attack. The whole Israel, right? God signed, sealed children. So all that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
for he hath broken the, the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, iniquities are afflicted. So those who are against God and his children have been tore up, going to be tore up, will stay tore up. They have the curses of Egypt coming or are already experiencing them. So their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his words with rejoicing. That they that they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raiseth the stormy wind which lifteth up the waves therefore that is also a warning for moving that shit he about to tear up life in the sea for moving that shit right but for everyone else the sacrifices for israel the sacrifices that we have made as israel we have nothing but abundance and prosperity coming our way we have been washed and cleansed with the blood we have followed our path we have completed our journey Right, we have completed our journey that God, our God given assignments, that's our journey. We finished them. It's not life that's your journey, it's your God given assignment. So, we finished our God given assignments, which is our journey. So, now we're allowed to live our lives as we so please. And I don't mean filthy because what have we been? We've been cleaned, washed, right? Right, and let them that sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing that they go down to the sea in ships and do business in great waters. These <clears throat> see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind that lifted up the waters. That's 25. That was the warning for you for moving that shit. Dear Egypt, uh, they mount up to the heaven because you will be begging and screaming and hollering. This is also a double-edged sword. You'll be hollering and screaming, dear Egypt, right? You should have listened to God. What did he say? I tore me some people up. I afflicted some people, right? Go back and listen to, look up in there. He was talking about how he afflicted people, right? Verse 10, verse 10. He talked about how he afflicted people. For being hard headed and they had to go through their trials and tribulations, right? You're hard headed, so now you're gonna get, yeah, go check out that last one, right? You're getting the curses, right? So now go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits' end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves of their, uh, are still so you're gonna go through it dear egypt right i told you this is double edged sword you're gonna go through it dear egypt so be glad and rejoice in it right you brought your own butt whoop from god on so now rejoice and be glad in it right he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves there of are still because it's gonna get hot and heavy on your behind right he's gonna use an extension cord on you right Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Now, this is back to Israel, praising God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We love you so much for everything you've done for us. We appreciate everything that you've done for us. We appreciate the food. We appreciate the clothes. We appreciate the shelter more than anything. We appreciate our mind being sane. We appreciate our bodies being, hey, semi-healthy if nothing else. We appreciate semi-health if nothing else because we can still get up and praise and say your name, Heavenly Father. And even if we can't praise and say your name, we can think it, which means our mind is still together and you are still in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Right. So, verse 31, Oh, that man will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. This is us letting you know the goodness of God. Whatever is dry and broke down in your life, God can water it, but you have to cultivate it and turn it over. You got to get that hard clay from off the top, that hard, broke, stank dirt off the top, and dig down into it and get it out. You got to clean it out. You got to keep turning it over. You got to keep watering it. You got to dig down till you get that cool, wet nutrients of the earth, right? Because that's the only place where something's going to grow. You got to get all the way down to that cool part of the ground, the cool part of the dirt, where it's nice and cool and slightly moist, right? Because anything before that, you're seeing on diet, you want to continuously have to water it, right? Right, right, right. Verse 34, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wicked and of them that dwell therein. So I'm going to go back to 33. 
He turneth rivers into wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of them that dwell up therein. So those who, you know, don't do what they're supposed to do, you get the opposite. See, I get the praise in God. Right. We get the good. You guys get the bad. See? That's what happens. And we didn't have the bad before. We didn't have the dry. We didn't have the oof. Right. <laughs> and now we have to oh, hop on that wave. Right. You can't hop on this wave. We talking to each other as the signs still deliver. Hop on the wave. We can go surfboarding. Right. Verse 36. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blessed them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffer not their cattle to decrease. So God bless his Israel yet again. So we letting people know God always does for us. Even if we get out of order slightly, he whoops our behind because he don't ever let us get all the way out of order. He lets us out of order slightly, whoops us back in, and then we do what we're supposed to do for our father to get back under his good graces, right? We don't sugarcoat and butter him up because that's not how you got to put forth work to get back in God's good graces. And then he goes back to blessing you, right? Right. 39, again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. See, these are people who keep going up and down, up and down, up and down, moving to and fro. See, that is you, dear Egypt. He does not have time. He's spanking you, beating you, afflicting you. Right. That's why you're getting afflicted because you're going to and fro. But for my babies, uh-uh. I'm keeping them to and fro's away from you. Right. And we thank you, God, for keeping them to and fro's away from us. So remember, this is a double-edged sword. We started off praising God, letting you know, God, we love you. What it looked like to praise God. Then God jumped in and said, hold up. Now I got another message for Egypt, too, because this is a double-edged sword. Always is. Right. God's word is always a double-edged sword. Read the Bible. Right. He poured con con 40. He poured contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. He takes his children away from the nasty and puts them on a mountain on high. Right. His kids sit on a mountain on high and watches him tear up the evil heathens down low. Right. The children always get to watch his father. They father tear up the heathens. Right. If they can handle watching them. Read in Revelations, right. They were allowed to watch it take place if they could handle seeing it, right. The righteousness shall see it and rejoice in all iniquity shall stop her mouth. The last verse, 43. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. So he says, you better come and observe these, 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 these things here. Observe all of this. Read this real good. Read Psalms 107. 1 through 43, real good, right? Read that over and over and over. Put that in your heart. Understand this particular psalms because God said, I whoop you. You get good. Then you act up. I whoop you. Then you get good. You act up. I whoop you. Then you get good. He said, I, 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 this is too much. You are too old for this process. So I'm not going to continue to whoop you and let you get good. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat you down because I had enough for you. And then I'm going to put you out of my house because it's time for you to go. And that's exactly how this thing is going. So what we had was Psalms 107, verse 1 through 43. God said, look, you got to make the choice to be with me and me only. And I am not going to force you. I'm going to whoop you and put you out of my house because we're not going to go back and forth. And this is what you've been doing with Israel, my children. My sign is still. You've been going back and forth, causing them all kinds of affliction. Now, I've been talking to you for the past couple of days. If you listen to her messages, you are causing afflictions upon yourself, and you're blaming her and Israel for your afflictions. Absolutely freaking lutely not. That will no longer happen again. So today is the day. Passover started on Saturday. But I got, right, by the third day. And ready to tear life up. Because you are not following this Passover that you asked for. You are afflicting my Israel. You are harassing my Israel. And they are not bothering you. They don't want anything to do with you. Because I separated you from them. They are the weak. Israel is the weak. You heathens are the chaff. But you keep trying to blow your behinds over here on Israel. And the VN and her Israel keep cussing you out. Calling you all kinds of names. Doing everything they can to back you up from them. Now somebody called me all kinds of words that I consider hate speech. I'm going to stay away from that person. Because that's the only reason she's saying the things she's saying. To keep you away from her and Israel. But no, as a chaff, you want to bring your little nasty self and jump onto the weed again. It doesn't work like that. So now you can jump onto me as God, right? You can jump onto me as God, Durga. Jump on me as God, right? 
That's what you're going to do. Jump on me as God. Come over here and jump on me, dear wheat, dear chaff. Come jump on me as God, dear chaff, because you're going to leave my wheat alone. I done told you about messing with my wheat. My wheat has been separated from you. And you keep running over there to Divinia and Dove Nation. That is the wheat. You are the chaff, dear people who are not a fan of Divinia. Right. And I don't mean like a celebrity fan. I mean respect and understand where she's coming from. And, and want to be down with Christianity like you're supposed to be the proper light way. If you have a problem with her, you are the chaff. And she is separating herself from you. But you keep chasing behind her. And that's not fair to any of my children. I say get the hell on away from my kids. Now, there's no way a woman going to tell you continuously every day to stop coming around her. And you still do it on every social media platform. She invited people to subscribe to this. No, you want to go over there and harass her over there. Because, you, yeah, yeah, the paid stuff is over there to play around with her. No, absolutely not. So... Israel has separated themselves from you. The weed has been separated from the chaff, and you dear jokesters and trolls are chaff. And I'm going to burn you up. I don't know why you keep going around Divinia. You're calling her all kinds of bigots and stuff, and you hate Dove Nation. Guess what? That's the weed. You're the chaff. Deal with it. You chose to be chaff. You will never be weed. You will never be Dove Nation. Those who hate Divinia, you already know you're going to get burnt up. Right? You, can't, you hated my son Jesus, and I hate my daughter Divinia. You people are absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. I gave you two beautiful children of mine. Two beautiful children of mine, and you didn't appreciate neither one of them. And one of them, Jesus, you still disrespect him too. Right. Right. You, you'll take Divinia over Jesus. So, but then you still want to disrespect Divinia. Right. But you won't want Jesus, but you'll take Divinia over Jesus, but you still will not respect Divinia. So, with that being said, you people are totally nuts. I don't, you, you had, your, your parents had to be utterly efficient. Yeah, you had to be an IVF baby. There's no way. There's no way. You had, your dad had to be an IVF baby or something. Right? There's no way. So with that being stated, right, there's IVF somewhere in your bloodline for you to believe that it is cool to want this person dead, to hate this person, but still think you're not a hateful person yourself. Right? It is totally ridiculous. So Israel, Divina has separated herself from you. So I got, I'm going to ask you one more time. Stay the hell away from, I'm going to tell you. Stay the hell away from Divina and her social media. If you are not a Christian, a sign still delivered, I love Divina Christian. If you are not a I love Divina Hong Kong, if you love Divina Christian, stay away from her. Now you have been warned. You have been warned to stay away from her if you are not a I love Divina Hong Kong Christian. Right? Because after, after this warning right here, you're just playing games with her. You're just playing games with your life. And you're playing games with me as God. And I'm not playing with none of you. Because how often do your father really play with you? Right? When he say go sit down, he's not playing with you. When you got an old school daddy, he tell you to sit down. And that's what he means. So with that being stated, this conversation is over. Y'all better start listening. Stay away from Davinia if you are not a I love Hong Kong Christians. Right? Hong Kong, I love Davinia. I support Davinia. Davinia is my boo. Right? If you don't feel like Davinia your boo... Hong Kong, I love this girl, I support her wholeheartedly. Stay away from her. Because she has separated herself from you so many times. And you chase behind her and try and call her all kinds of names. No, she's defending herself from you guys. And you won't stay away from her. So she's going to stay away from you. No more live. Right. Have a nice one.